So in this video, I'll be showing you how to name organic compounds of this nature. Now, how do we name organic compounds of this nature? My first task or the first rule is to get the longest continuous carbon chain. And by that, it means find the longest continuous connection of carbon atoms without a stoppage. All right. Um, now, for this, for this, my first task would be start from this end. I'm having one, two, three, four, five. There are two carbon atoms here, C2. So five plus two gives you seven. That means if I go this way, I have about seven carbon atoms. Let's start from this end. From this end, I have about one, two, three, four. If I, if I move downwards, four plus two gives you six. So from this end, I have about six carbon atoms. But if I go straight, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So between seven this way and six this way and eight this way, obviously I have this eight being the longest continuous carbon chain. Now, so the first stat there is that number one, I have eight. The longest continuous carbon chain is eight and eight is given by ox. So eight is called an ox. That's the first um, rule in naming compounds. The second rule now will be to identify the functional group. Now, when it comes to functional group, and let me call it rule two. Rule two is functional group. For functional group, you look for you look out for um, the functional group in the compound. If it's a single bond throughout, it's an alkene. Double bond is an alkene. Triple bond is an alkyne. I have a triple bond here. The functional group is a triple bond, and triple bond is actually an alkyne. That's the th that's the second rule, right? The third rule now be get out the substituents. Now, the substituent literally is any other um, molecule or atom that is attached to the functional group, which is not hydrogen. All right, so hydrogen is not considered a substituent, while other attachments are considered substituents. For instance, it means that this hydrogen here are not considered as um, substituents. But look at this I have I. I means iodine. So my first substituent there, we have I. I is iodine, okay? What else do we have? We have this attachment to the parent carbon atom, which is this one here, C2H5. C2H5 is actually called the ethyl, right? This is called ethyl, all right? Ethyl is part of what is called the alkyl group, right? I've discussed this in our previous class. Um, I'll leave the link in the comments in the description, right? Okay, also, we also have this connection here. This thing here, this um, structure, is connected to carbon. This structure you have here is called phenyl. All right. What you have here is called phenyl. Now, basically, phenyl is the is a benzene, right? It's a benzene structure that has lost one hydrogen. All right. We know that benzene is C6H6. Right. This is benzene. If benzene loses one hydrogen, it becomes C6H5. This becomes the molecular formula for phenyl. All right, with all of this, with all of this identified, my task will now be do a numbering. For the numbering system, I'll do an upper numbering and lower numbering. I'll do upper numbering. Let's start from right to left. Upper numbering, I'm having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do a lower, lower numbering, left to right. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight now between the upper numbering and lower numbering i'll pick the one that has that gives me the lowest possible um position to the triple bond now if i take upper numbering if i go with upper numbering you will see that i have to pass through carbon one before the triple bond in essence carbon one bears the triple bond if i follow the lower numbering you see that i have to pass through carbon seven before i get to triple bond so in essence, carbon 7 bears the triple bond. Between 1 and 7, 1 is lower. So I'll go with 1. That's the triple bond. That's the, um, that's the upper numbering. So basically, this is how the numbering system works. Go with the one that has the least possible position to the triple bond. Now, with this being said, let's now name this compound. Now, in naming the compound, note that you have to start from the inorganic substituent. By inorganic, we mean the halogens, like the iodine. Iodine is at position 5 and 7. So this now becomes, the compound is called 5, 7. Since we have 2 iodine, it becomes 
dye iodo so i'm done with iodine after this go to the organic substituents for organic substituents taking alphabetical order we have ethyl or e before p so i'm taking ethyl ethyl is at position five so you can see here that becomes five ethyl okay next up we have phenyl phenyl is attached at cap at two position four and seven that becomes four seven di phenyl di means two phenyl and then put in the parent one there opt it becomes opt now observe that this was carbon one bearing the triple bond it becomes opt one triple bond is an alkyne so we'll take just the last three um letters here y n e that becomes octyne all right so basically this is how we name this compound so the name of this compound is 57 diiodo 5 ethyl 47 diphenyl oct 1 i so this is how we name this compound if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button leave a comment and share to your friends thank you and see you in the next class